Hey everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. We are going to be joining Natalie for our virtual cooking class. So she's back again to cook us up a delicious fall inspired meal with lots of color, um, lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. And we are filming to you live right out of the teaching kitchen space at Med Center Greensboro. So we are very excited to get in here and test the space with you tonight and look forward to some in-person classes yes, in I'm 2023. So, <laughs> yes, I'm so excited to be here. It's such a lovely facility, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be teaching. Um, tonight, we're going to be doing a butternut squash and turkey sausage hatch. So whenever you're all ready, we can get started. Yeah, and guys, if you have any questions or comments while Natalie's cooking, we love interaction. So I'm a dietitian. She's our chef. We've got your questions covered when it comes to food and nutrition. So you can open up the chat box or use the Q&A function. I'll be keeping an eye on that so we can answer all your questions as we go. Natalie, I'll let you take it away. Yes, thank Thanks. you. All right. Thanks guys so much for tuning in and joining us live tonight. Of course, if you missed the live and you need to come back to it, this recording will be available online. But we're going to go ahead and get started with our butternut squash um, just to run through the ingredients for tonight, pretty simple, butternut squash, one package of Brussels sprouts, one red onion. You could go with a much smaller red onion. This has just happened to be what I had already on hand. A red bell pepper. And then of course, we've got some really nice leafy kale and our smoked turkey sausage. So I really like this Hillshire Farm brand. It's readily available at most places. And by going with the turkey sausage version, you're getting a little um, higher quality and cleaner protein. So we're going to get started with the butternut squash. If you've never tackled one of these, it can look like a little intimidating. So like, I don't even know where to start or what it is. Pretty simple. You grab a potato peeler. I really recommend a super sharp one. Um, I have some link on my Amazon store if y'all are interested or if you need one. Um, but we're just going to get started with peeling the butternut squash. It's kind of a fun process. Just go slow and remove the skin as you would a potato. I like to use my left hand to kind of guide. And then of course you can work away from yourself or toward yourself. So we're just going to peel the skin. I promise this is the most intense thing that we'll do all night, but it's so worth it. Do I have any of my Nat Packs clients on live tonight? If you do, raise your hand and Kate will let me know. Going up the sides is a little bit easier. Around some of the curved areas, it definitely takes a tiny bit more time and just attention so that you don't end up cutting yourself or getting hurt. But again, just go slow and kind of make your way around the whole butternut squash. Since this is a fairly large one, I will most likely only use half of it once I get it, get it cut up and we see what that volume looks like. It's just me, Kate, and one other person here in the kitchen tonight, so I don't need to make enough for eight. So um, if we have any extra, we can store that in the refrigerator in just an airtight container. We can always take it home and roast it or use it in another recipe. But again, this is the most challenging thing that we'll be doing this evening. Everything else is pretty simple, so bear with us. Who all is cooking with us tonight? Now, as you start to remove the skin, the actual flesh of the butternut squash is a little bit more slick. So again, just take your time.
Some grocery stores even have the butternut squash prepared and pre-cubed for you in the pick and prep area or the ready to go area. And that's always a great purchase or an item to have on hand when they're fresh and in season, especially this time of year. I really will pair butternut squash with so many things. Of course, grabbing the pre-prepared, pre-cut, pre-pilled option is Saves a ton of time, but I get a lot of questions about what to do with this thing. So I figured this would be a great opportunity on the cone line to talk about how to peel it and just taking your time to make your way around the whole squash. So now that we have that pretty well peeled, I'm gonna touch up this area. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my big sharp knife. This is a great one for cutting this squash. You can go this way or you can go long ways, whichever you think is a better option. I'm going to go this way and I'm going to go slow. If it's slick, you can always grab a towel to help create some leverage and keep the butternut squash from sliding around as much. So once you have it cut, there will be seeds on the inside, much like a pumpkin. If you haven't cut pumpkins already, probably should. It should be cold enough to where they won't go bad in like two days. But I'm just going to use a traditional spoon and scrape this out into the trash. Okay. All right. So now that we have the seeds removed, we can go ahead and start cutting the butternut squash. I'm going to save this section for later. And there is a little bit left. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off. Some of you may have seen the segments that I did earlier this week with WXII and WFMY. If you're curious, there is a study going on with Elon University and they're looking for high school seniors to participate. The study will look at the transition for high school seniors into a four-year university and how changes in the environment affect their overall health. So if you're curious, we can get you that link or you can reach out to me or Kate on social media or via email. Take your time with the squash. It can be a little slippery, but it's completely worth it, I promise. So I'm just using my knife to cut away any of the remaining part I wasn't able to get with the spoon. And then we're taking the larger section and cutting it down into about a one inch cube. Doesn't have to be perfect or uniform. Now that we already, now that we have that prepared, we'll go ahead and heat our skillet or our pan. I'm using the large cast iron. Most of you know that's probably my favorite 
and I use it for almost all of the cooking classes here with Cone. I'm going to start out on about a three or four. This goes all the way up to an eight. So that's a, a low to medium setting. Just to get that warmed up, we'll go ahead and add in two tablespoons of olive oil. And I've reserved a little bowl for my trash. It just makes cleaning up as you go and a lot easier. Let's we'll set that aside and we'll toss that in a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and get started on our Brussels sprouts. So these are another thing that a lot of people ask about, like what do I do? Do I just put the whole thing in there? Do I boil it? What is the best way? Um, I really like them roasted in the oven, but you can also pan fry them like we'll be doing tonight or saute them. And you just want to start by taking the end and then cutting in half. So I'm going to switch to a smaller knife. It gives me a little bit more control with the Brussels sprouts. And so we're just going to take the end and then cut it in half and slide it aside. Natalie, I love all the different colors you've got going on here, but I can't wait to smell it really <laughs> <laughs> as it starts going. So Brussels sprouts are one of those things that you really have to learn to like. And so trying them in different ways, salting, putting them in the pan with oil, roasting them in the oven with spices and a drizzle of oil. I'm um, just trying really any vegetable you're trying to learn to like in different ways and different combinations. Maybe put it alongside a familiar recipe so it's not all new at one time. But I had another dietitian tell me one time that if people can learn to like scotch, they can learn to like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> or gin. And it's, they're all acquired taste, right? So right, but give I, them a chance. <laughs> exactly. And I have also heard that it takes five to eight times for your taste buds to really acclimate and um, understand the flavor. And plus there's like 20 different ways that you can cook these. So Absolutely. don't, don't be afraid to get creative. And if you're ever curious, or if this is the way that you like them, try, try a new way, try a new way, maybe just, um, slice them up really thin and yeah. add them to a salad. A little bit of bacon. Mm -hmm. Bacon goes a long way. <laughs> bacon fixes Brussels sprouts, bacon. I promise. Bacon goes a long way. Honey is a really good option. Oh, yeah. just honey a, mustard. Mm, honey mustard, that's great. what I was going to say. Yep. Just a touch of mustard or even just mustard powder or mustard seeds goes a really, really long way. And then also balsamic mm. demi. Balsamic demi is probably my favorite. I love them right in the Is that what we're doing tonight? Yes. yes. So we do have that. Um, at the end, I'll, we'll probably garnish our meals with just a touch of the balsamic. It goes really well, not only with the Brussels sprouts, but the butternut squash too. So it really accentuates those flavors and it's really robust and diverse. And so um, I really enjoy the balsamic to me. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. We're it's really have... worth trying. <laughs> To learn to like because it's full of fiber, super nutritious food, one of our kind of super foods, if you will. Anything that's got that deep dark green or deep dark purple color is full of antioxidants and great for this time of year as we get into flu season and wanting to stay well. So I'm excited to see it used in a recipe like this, very different than anything I've ever tried. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you're so welcome. All right, so I've got two handfuls of the Brussels sprouts. I'm going to do a couple of more, but we're almost ready. My pan should be good and warm. Um, and I'm going to start by tossing in the butternut squash. And so I'm just going to give grab those up and put them in our pan. With the cast iron, because it does heat up so well, a lot of times there's an adjustment on temperature. So if you're cooking at home, you may need like a level four out of six to get this type of sizzle. Whereas with the cast iron, a lower temperature will really, um, will do the job. So we're gonna start with that. And those are just arranged in the pan.
And then we're going to go ahead and add in the tablespoons of garlic and onion. So I'm just gonna shake this in. I don't wanna shake in too much right now because we still have Brussels sprouts to add, but I'm gonna go ahead and let the butternut squash get started while I cut up a few more of these. If there's any spots on your Brussels sprouts that aren't really pretty, just peel that layer off. That's the great thing about cutting down the middle, you're able to um, just kind of pull off any not so prettier pieces or and just toss those at the end. Okay, we are good again. Um, but I don't know that they heard your answer to how to tell. We had a question from Gwen if butternut butternut squash, how to know when it is right. Okay, great. That's we a, can go with that one more time. Yeah, that's a really great question. So with fruit, think watermelon, cantaloupe, anything like that, that grows on a vine. When you press it, you're gonna get a little more smell and feedback and be able to identify if it's, if it's ready to eat. With the butternut squash, that's a little bit harder to tell because there's less smell and there's less give. So even when this is, from peak ready to use, it's still very, very firm. Um, it does take quite a bit of pressure to push through the squash in the cutting process. Definitely recommend a towel if things start to get slick and you really need to put the elbow grease in there. But one of the best ways to tell is when you're looking at the end here, I don't know if y'all can see that, but it should look more brown than green and viney. So, you want to kind of see that it looks a little aged, um, kind of similar to when you're looking at an avocado. If you're looking at an avocado in the end of it, it's like super green. You're gonna know that that avocado is still unripe or underripe. Same thing here, the actual stem or part of it should be kind of brown in texture, not super green and not look really, really fresh. So. Um, I'm not sure what all else I'll miss, but I added in the remainder of the Brussels sprouts and just said, depending upon what type of skillet you're using and your temperature, keep an eye to make sure that it doesn't get too dry or cook too fast. So if it starts to get really, really brown or you start to see that all the olive oil has absorbed and things are getting a little sticky, turn it down and add in an extra drizzle of olive oil. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the turkey sausage. These are great options to have on hand. They can be, you can throw them in the freezer and pull them out whenever you're ready. They go really, really well for a breakfast sandwich. Um, they also go uh, extremely great with grits and bacon or grits and eggs. So having these turkey sausages on hand are a very versatile item. So I'm just cutting this into one inch, uh, about half of the inch section. And I'm gonna make my way through the whole sausage. We are start, starting to develop a nice color on our butternut squash and our Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna give them another little stir. And then we can go ahead and add in the sausage. Now this sausage does still have quite a bit of fat in it. So it's not only gonna create more flavor for our dish, but it's also gonna crank up that browning possibility. So give this a good stir. And in it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and add in another drizzle of olive oil, just because those Brussels sprouts really do soak up the oil and the flavor. All right, so next is our red onion. 
So I typically start cutting a red onion. I'm only going to use maybe a fourth of this one. It is fairly large for just the small, um, just the three of us eating tonight. I'm going to start by taking the ends. And then typically to get that skin off, I just do one cut and then I peel all the way around for that top layer. So here I'm going to make nice thin slices. We want to create flavor, but we don't want the onion super identifiable in the hash or in the mouth. So by cutting in nice thin slices, it's going to cook really well. But so I've cut about a fourth of that. It's a kind of a small handful. I'm going to go ahead and add it in. If you don't like onions, skip it. If you have something else that you really like, um, you're welcome to use that. The onion do, the onion does have a really great flavor and will add some interest to the dish. Next up is our red pepper. We are going to use the whole thing. Again, I'm going to start with taking the top and the bottom, and then I'm going to go down the side, and then I'm just going to wiggle my knife in and remove the inside. If you have a compost, those are great items to compost. In here, we're just going to make nice cuts. I'm going to pause and give everything over here a stir. Good. Now let's talk a little bit about the balance of this meal. Obviously we wanted to go for colorful meals tonight and we've got our red, our yellow, green, and even our purple from the onion in there. So you checked off all the boxes of the yeah. rainbow. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also you're always really good about being mindful of the balance of your meals. So having a good amount of protein, but I love that you always mix it into a bigger dish that's full of a really fiber rich starch, whether that's a grain or a vegetable, as well as our non-starchy vegetables. So yeah. it's a really great balance and it allows you to have that flavorful fat from your protein options. Um, without having that take up too much of your plate. And what's really filling up our stomachs here are all those good colorful the vegetables. vegetables. Yes, yes. And I, I try to think about that, not only when I prepare these recipes, but also when I shop. So a great way or a great thing to keep in mind when you go to the grocery store is what items are going to go really, really well together and be easy, but also provide a lot of nutrients. So not only are we getting a really high quality carbohydrate with the squash, but we still have a very plant heavy meal. And I'm gonna be topping this with kale. So even though I only use half of the butternut squash and a handful or so of the Brussels sprouts and then the peppers and the onion, it's gonna be really, really bold. And there's a lot from the volume perspective. So it can go a really long way. So now that we've got that all ready, our red onion and red peppers are in. You could also substitute if you're not a fan of Brussels sprouts. I get it. I get it. You know, give it a try, a couple different ways. But if you're just not a fan of Brussels sprouts, maybe substitute Brussels for broccoli or even asparagus. 
So if you have some asparagus and, or some broccoli that you need to use up, this would be a great recipe to substitute some items you may already have on hand and get creative. I'm gonna start with just three things of the kale. And I'm simply just gonna cut down the stem. And here, what I'm gonna do is kind of roll the kale and give it a coarse chop. Because this is the most delicate and tender thing in our recipe, recipe this evening, it'll go in very last. So it'll really only cook for about a minute once we put the kale in. So I'm gonna give this another stir. And we are going to go ahead and season with the thyme, smoked paprika, and then the additional garlic. I'm going to go ahead and put this in. And we're going to follow that up with the kale. So Michelle, this is looking really good, Natalie. <laughs> Michelle has a question about, um, can you use spinach instead of kale? Absolutely. And get the same nutritional value, which they are very similar. Yeah. They're both dark leafy greens. Yes. I would say kale probably is still the star. Uh-huh. Um, but when we think about, again, eating colors um, and having more color on our plate, it's actually the phytonutrients, so plant nutrients in the food that give it its color. So a lot of these dark leafy greens are gonna have very similar nutrition to other dark leafy greens. A lot of purplish foods are gonna have similar nutrition to other purples and blues. Yes. Yellows and oranges are very similar. So if you're staying within the same color family, you're probably getting that similar um, nutrition yes. benefit. You could even use uh, Swiss chard, mustard mm -hmm. greens, collard greens. If you like sauteed collard greens, those are all really great options. In this dish, I like to keep the cooking minimal so you still get that really like kind of crunch from the green. Just be careful with the spinach because it'll wilt and get really soft really fast. So that's one of those items you would add in at the very, very last minute if you're going to be cooking it. I guess we're pretty much ready to eat. So now that we've wilted down that kale, I'm just going to add it out on a serving platter. I'm going to cut a little bit more kale to garnish and just make it look pretty but we're pretty much done how's everyone doing it is everyone following along does it look and smell good over at your house too everybody said it looks delicious natalie well thank you so much for joining us of course if you have questions you're welcome to send us a message or an email um, if you end up watching the video later and you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Feel free to share it with a friend, but I'm going to go ahead and load up our serving dish so us ladies can have dinner. I have a question while you're doing that. Yeah. So you said you like cooking in the cast iron. That's like your favorite. So what? Uh, the cast iron. Oh, yeah. How do you clean it? <laughs> um, cleaning the cast iron is another one of those things that sounds daunting, but it's really not. I like to just put it in the sink while it's still a little warm, not super, super hot, just a little warm. And I have a special type of scrubbing that I use. It's called chain metal. And it you just give it a good little scrub down and then um, set it aside to dry fully and then re-oil it. So no soap and um, no soap and minimal water. That's the secret. There's certain kind of oil that you prefer. I just 
is olive oil um, and a little bit of heat. But if your cast iron is brand new or comes unseasoned, there is a more extensive process for seasoning your cast iron. But here's a finished product. So again, we've got butternut squash, Brussels sprouts, red pepper, red onion, kale, and then our turkey sausage. Everyone says yum, looks delicious. Yeah, this looks so good, Natalie. <laughs> looks fantastic. Um, so we did have a question also if this would be a good meal to serve for someone with diabetes, and absolutely it is. It has the perfect balance that we're looking for. So we've got a little bit of starch from the butternut squash, but it's but, very high in fiber. Okay, when we say starch or carbohydrate, this is one of those carbohydrates that's more complex. Your body and your glucose insulin system is less likely to immediately turn this into sugar. So you're going to get lower, slower energy release from this carbohydrate. So it's a healthy carbohydrate choice for someone managing their blood sugar. And it's only about a fourth of our dish. And so we're balancing that out with a bunch of non-starchy vegetables that do not impact blood sugar. And then we've also got the protein, which is not going to affect blood sugar. And it's going to make the energy from these other foods last a lot longer. So definitely a great balanced dish for someone manage your blood sugar or with family members. But I love that diabetes. question. I do. I truly do. Heart Thank healthy so as well. Yeah. I mean, you can watch them out of oil and maybe cut back a little bit on that if you're watching calories, mm -hmm. but heart healthy. But that oil, a really high quality olive oil is a great way to get in some additional fat. So a lot of times we end up using really lean protein, especially if we're using chicken or turkey. And those two tablespoons of, there's four tablespoons of olive oil for the, for the whole dish. So this would probably feed six to seven people easily, or at least six to seven me and Kate. <laughs> um, now I'll put this in front of my brother or my boyfriend. Oh, sure. <laughs> and probably tackle half of the dish. But four servings of olive oil or four tablespoons of olive oil for six to seven serving or six to seven servings is really low. Yeah. So that's a Still, again, high quality fat in a low volume. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to dig Yay! in. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.